Hello, so something quite unusual to look at in this video. Weirdly, somebody on the Patreon Discord actually asked me could I do a video on one of these, even though B-Store had already sent me one and I got around to doing a video on it yet. So this is a Polish ATE-1 rebreather, so it basically just sounds like 8-1, as in Alpha Tango Echo. And from what I understand, these like modern rebreathers, that I guess the idea is to replace the IP4s and IP5s. Um, you know, something a bit more modern, but in, you'll see something quite interesting in there. It's compatible with the old IP5 kind of things. So it comes in a bag like this, um, and you'll notice compared to a lot of older rebreathers, this is actually nowhere near as bulky, which is nice. So let's open this up so you can see it. And here we go. So there's a couple of components in here. There is essentially the breathing tube, the bit you breathe in and out of because it's a rebreather. So obviously, you don't exhale a rebreather like, you know, into the air like you would with a regular respirator. The point of a rebreather is that you recycle the air. Now, what I'm going to say before I go any further with this, and this is just a safety thing I'd like to stress to everybody, in no way am I qualified at all to talk about rebreathers. I mean, I'm not really qualified, like I've said before, to talk about gas masks, other than I've just done a lot of reading on them and I find them really interesting, you know, like that sort of respirators. Rebreathers are really not something you mess about with just because of how potentially hazardous they can be and rebreathers can be very very useful in certain situations and for certain people doing certain jobs they're a lifesaver, don't get me wrong. The issue is with rebreathers is that if you're going to use one you kind of need to be trained to do it which is why I've never done a video actually you know using a rebreather scrubber unit. Again you might be able to you know use it, get away with it completely fine and be safe. Personally I don't like the idea of using rebreathers because of all the risks associated with them so I'm just going to say that there. If you are intending to use a rebreather, please, please, please make sure you do enough reading on them first and probably speak to somebody who's trained to do it. And I, when I say that, I mean don't go online and ask about rebreathers on a forum or something. Go and actually speak to somebody qualified. So, this is what you get in the back. So, that's that's the bit of the video out of the way that's negative bit in a sense, because all this is really cool. So, there's some quite nice goggles of this. So, it says... Toplux made in Japan. I don't know if these goggles necessarily come with all of them, or if this was just in the particular one I got. Also, you'll notice that that clamps your nose. There's a reason for that. It's basically to stop you breathing. The idea is that this makes an airtight seal around your face and your nose, so you have to breathe in and out through your mouth. That's obviously on purpose, because it's a rebreather. Um, because again, it's kind of hard to think about this concept with rebreathers, unless you kind of, you know, get used to it you're always breathing in and out of your mouth of a rebreather because the point is it's recycling the air. So, that's the goggles. So let's have a look at the actual unit itself. So I'll get that out of the bag because it's quite nice and compact and then I'll show you the scrubber unit. So, here is the rebreather unit itself. Minus the scrubber. So, what we have here, I might as well put this on, is basically you've got this essentially like a buoyancy bag, kind of the bladder like you have with most rebreathers. Like with the Soviet rebreathers and everything else, you get the satchel for the canister. Now, I'm not going to pull the pin on this because it looks like you have kind of a pin on this thing. But I think this would be like some auto-inflating device. I'll get it out to show you, but I'm not going to pull the pin. I said, I assume the purpose of this is that it basically, you know, you break some sort of seal on it and it massively inflates this really quickly. I guess the idea is that, you know, it means you don't have to, if you're using this in an emergency scenario, which these are basically used for, um, you know, you don't have to mess about because you really don't want to. I guess, actually looking at that, that maybe this bit pushes into there, and that's how it inflates it and, like, breaks the seal. But as I said, I'm not going to do it. So, we, you have two bits here. This is what the scrubber unit connects to. And this bit here is what the rebreather hose connects to. So I'm not going to put the rebreather hose in my mouth because I don't really want to get it. And as I said, I don't want to play about with it too much, but I'll show you. So it has uh, Phaser written on there. They're like one of the main companies that does a lot of the Polish gas masks and things like this. This bit twists around. Not exactly sure what this accomplishes by twisting around, because as I said, I am not trained to use rebreathers, but that bit twists. Ah, uh, hang on. Oh, I've done something there. What have I knocked off? Right. Something fell off there. I think it was a little button, but essentially... This bit goes backwards and forwards, when that's like that, and it was th that might have just been like, you know, a lock to say it hadn't been used before, I don't know. But anyway, somebody who's more qualified in rebreathers might know how this bit works, but obviously this is the bit that goes in your mouth that you breathe in and out of. Um, and yeah, this is the sort of design of this, it's kind of got a little pump bit there by the look of it. So, here you have essentially your ghost thread, um, male ghost thread. 
One thing you'll notice with rebreathers that's quite interesting is they tend to be the opposite way around of gas masks in the sense that with rebreathers you tend to have the female socket, uh, even though they're 40 millimeter, as far as I'm aware, 40 millimeter gossed on the um, actual rebreather unit themselves. On the um, you know like other bits, it tends to be uh, male, where you know obviously you're normally like a gas mask respirator that's in gossed, you'd have a 40 millimeter male thread on the filter. The mask is the female thread for um, screwing it in. So I guess that's so you don't mix up rebreather parts and gas mask parts. So anyway, let's go on to this. This has like a nice big rubber washer on the end there. So you would put this in here and screw it in. For some reason this is reminding me of the heart plugs they have in the David Lynch Dune movie, I don't know why. So Baron Harkonnen is just going to fly over and pull it out. So there you go. Um, there's that. So that's attached. So then obviously you twist that into place then that's ready to go in your mouth and use. So let's have a look at the actual scrubber unit now because that's quite interesting. Right, so here we are. You can see this is still wrapped up in its sort of polythene and it's got the sort of phaser things on it. Um, but what we're going to do is open this quite carefully. As I said, I'm not going to use the scrubber unit, but I do want to kind of show it off. So let's just open this up. There we are. So let's have a look at the scrubber. So here we are. And as I said, I'm not going to pull any of the plugs on this. Um, the nice thing, it has got those kind of security type seals on all the bits. So, as said, what you'd have with a scrubber unit, notice there's no ports at the bottom, because as much as a lot of people think these look like filters, they're not filters. So this one, I guess, was made in 2005, or it might have been 2006, that might be October 2006. And yeah, I'm assuming it was made in October 2006, you know, expired or taken out of military service, 05, 2016 potentially or they could be serial numbers. So anyway, this bit's called the PT-1. So the PT-1 is the unit used by this rebreather system. So how it would work, and I'll try and stand up and get the camera in frame of the kind of harness bit. So down here, as you can see, there's this kind of Velcro harness type thing. So what you'd do, you open this up, and you put this into there. Now, this looks like it's actually adjustable with Velcro, so I guess you want to try and get it to fit the scrubber unit as best you can. Probably have helped, wouldn't it, if I loosen that before I just put the scrubber unit in. As I said, I am not qualified really at all to talk about these things, but people find them interesting, so. Wiggle that around a bit more till we get the scrubber unit properly in. There we go. Right, so that's in like that. Now, as I said, this is where I'm not going to do some things in the video, but as you can see, these bits are the bits that would attach there, and that would be quite easy to do that, because obviously on this thing's harness, it sits where it's meant to for that bit there. So, what would happen now is I guess you'd put that bit over there, once that bit was connected, and you'd pull the pin. That starts your chemical reaction off. Rebreather scrubber units you work using a chemical reaction. I'm not qualified to talk about it, as I said, and I can never remember the things, but basically how they work is this bladder would be inflated with breathable air. This is the bit you breathe in and out of. So this bladder basically is just air that you're inhaling and exhaling. Now obviously what happens normally is when you are breathing, you uh, breathe in air and you're essentially exhaling, you know, although there's still some air in it, CO2 and uh, is it nitrogen? Again, like I said, I'm, I'm really not all these, you know, technically skilled up on these and like I said, I'm not going to use these things. But the point is that when you breathe out air, there still is more breathable air in the you know air you breathe out. The issue is if you just breathed in and out of a bag, what would happen is you'd be overwhelmed by carbon dioxide, so you'd suffocate. What a rebreather unit does is essentially a chemical reaction goes on in this big scrubber unit, and it basically takes the CO2 out of the air, leaving the air. So, as you can see, it basically just works in a cycle how it's attached to the bag. Now, why a rebreather is dangerous, you may ask. There's a couple of reasons. Um, there's one reason I've never seen personally happen, and I'm, when I say personally, I just mean I've never found actually videos of it happening online. That's not to say it can't happen, it's just I'm kind of a bit skeptical if it's as bad as everyone claims, and that's if water gets in these rebreather units, they can violently explode. Again, it could be entirely possible, but um, 
I don't think it's happened. I think Piotr even said to me, that's, you know, the bloke who does Beast on, that he even got some old scrubber units he wasn't going to sell and did some experiments trying to see if he could get anything bad to happen with them and he couldn't. So, you know, that might be where, that's a bit exaggerated, but again, still do not mess around with scrubber units unless you really know what you're doing. Um, the main danger with a rebreather, especially if you're not trained and you're not timing it and all this, is that when CO2 builds up, say you had a plastic bag over your head, um, or I was using that bloody Avon escape hood and not doing it properly. Hang on, let me just show you that. Remember this thing? So when I had this on, when this inflated with um, CO2, when I was breathing out and CO2 was building up because the air wasn't escaping properly, uh, you start panicking because your body is literally programmed to know if CO2 is building up. It's like a survival instinct. If you are in air that doesn't have CO2 in it, but the air is getting thinner and thinner and running out, you basically fall unconscious and suffocate that way. The danger with rebreather units is you don't know that you're suffocating until it's too late, especially if you're not trained to use them. So I, I guess it would be a pain with a suicide method, not that I'm obviously recommending that to anyone, of course, but you know that, that gives you some idea of how a kind of scrubber unit can go wrong. There's also lots of other things apparently can go wrong, you know, the chemical reaction doesn't work properly if you need it in a time of emergency if it's an old unit. You know, and again, there can be other dangers of poison gases created by the unit if something's gone wrong with it and all that sort of stuff. So I said, I personally wouldn't use a scrubber unit unless you're really trained to it, and then again, I wouldn't buy old scrubber units, although this is like a modern thing, and this is a fairly modern canister, I certainly prefer this to an IP5. Um, but yeah, as far as I'm aware, this is kind of like the IP5's canister, just modernised. But the thing is, obviously, it's a more modern, lightweight thing. So anyway, how it would work, because I can show you some of this. Let me fully loosen... Um, actually, I don't need to fully loosen the strap, do I? Because this is meant to be uncomfortably tight. I'm going to have to breathe through my mouth, so bear with me if I sound a bit nasally. So let's put this down. So yeah, as you can see, I can't breathe through my nose, so my voice might sound very strange now. So how this would work is you would have this, obviously, rebreathe a bit there. Then you'd have that in your mouth there. What would happen is you'd breathe in and out of your mouth and it would scrub it and you'd keep getting breathable air. So, why does this system work like this, you might wonder. So, this rebreather I think is designed as a vehicle escape rebreather. The idea is that, let's say you're in a tank or an armoured vehicle, there's a possibility that it might get submerged in water, like in a river if you're crossing a river with it, something like that, and the crew could drown, especially if they can't get out of the vehicle instantly. The idea of these is that they can basically very quickly have an air supply source that takes up a lot less weight and size than having a um, you know air tank. Rebreathers actually also last a lot longer when you're using them, due to the fact they're recycling air, not you know just you're inhaling air from a tank and then exhaling it. So um, you know for that reason they're good. And generally rebreathers are used by a lot of countries for certain things. Rebreathers also, if you had it on the full kind of CBRN setup, not with a thing like this, but you know essentially what looks like a gas mask, just set up to go in and out of a rebreather tube, a bit like the IP5s, IP4s, those sort of things, um, are much safer in levels of high contamination than regular gas masks because you're basically breathing in from an enclosed air source, not running the air through a filter. So hopefully this shows the Polish ATE one quite well. It's quite an interesting thing. What I will also show you quickly, let me just get the scrubber unit out of here. Um, most of the weight of this actually just comes from the scrubber unit. Um, what I will also show you that's quite interesting is just what this looks like if you unzip it. So, if you ever wondered, because it's a lot more accessible on this than some of the older rebreathers, you've got basically a zip on the back here. If we get the zip, it's not the easiest zip to undo, it's not a bad quality zip, it's just mostly the issue that. Obviously, this is constantly moving. As you know, I probably won't have to open it all the way, but there we go. Let's it out. So, if you look in there, all that's literally in there is this sort of oxygen bladder. So, this is just a material protecting that essentially, and this is the bit that fills up with the air you breathe. So, yeah, they're very simple in operation. It's essentially an artificial lung of sorts. And also another thing to point out, not this model, but rebreathers were invented before the Aqualon, and lots of the air tanks or diving equipment. So, you know, these are kind of older technologies, but there's still a use for them today in certain circumstances. So, I think we still have these on his page for about £80. Now, as I said before with rebreathers, because I want to give you a completely honest opinion on them, only ever get a rebreather if you know exactly what you're doing with it. 
Um, because, you know, as I said, there's a lot that can go wrong if you're not trained. And it's kind of, I'd, you know, much rather people stay safe than do anything stupid with these. So the point is that, you know, like I've said before with IP4s and IP5s and all that other stuff, if you are buying a rebreather, make sure you know what you're doing with it, because, you know, otherwise things will go horribly wrong. So anyway, if you're interested, it does say ATE1 on there. And then I guess that was the manufacture date of it, uh, 1005. That would be the same as the scrubber unit, actually, so that would make sense. Um, but yeah, so this is quite a neat little thing. Certainly a lot more lightweight and compact than the other scrubber units of rebreathers. Um, well, not the scrubber unit itself, but you know this bit. And there's one more thing I want to show you that I like about this rebreather um, that I can actually literally show you in real time. I'll just readjust the camera. And that's how easy it is to pack away compared to some of the older rebreather units. Okay, so what you can see here is obviously I've got the rebreather bit here, and here's the bag for it. So what we're going to literally do is get this and essentially just roll it up like this. There may be an even more sophisticated way of doing this, but what you will see, in this unit at least, is that then we can fold that like that. All we've done is literally fold this in on itself like that. We'll loop these, you know, bout bits around themselves. And we've already got this to a pretty small size. Now if I get the bag, what I can do now is get that in there, flip that around, and oh look, the rebreather unit is actually properly inserted back into its bag. Isn't that convenient? So what I'm going to do now, just chuck this back. Oh, and I found a little plug that fell off of the other bit earlier. So all that was, was this little peg. So I guess that just keeps something in tight in there. Probably that bit there, I guess. Something like that, I guess. Again, I'm not an expert. I'll chuck it just in the bag loose. But yeah, so the nice thing, at least with this rebreather unit, is that everything actually fits in pretty conveniently. I don't know about the scrubber unit. I imagine they're stored separately because it was sent separately as well. But you know, that would just go in there. Let me see if it will go in. The goggles. Where did I pop those? The goggles do nothing. Right, they're there. So the goggles. They literally as well just um, pop in the side in there somewhere. I think there's actually a little pouch you can put the goggles in. Yeah, it's there. So yeah, that's the goggles in there, um, as you can see. The point is that at least with these units, you can, in theory, if you're not me trying to do it, get these, um, you know, in and zip them up, like without the scrubber unit in there. Um, it's literally just a case of doing that. So, you know, there we go. So, yeah, Polish ATE-1 rebreather. Again, I'd say only recommended for people who think they look really cool or know what they're doing with rebreathers. But, you know, it is what it is and it is a cool piece of technology.